how to deploy a pre-populated SQLite database with a Xamarin app. First, we open up Visual Studio, create a mobile app, select Mobile App Xamarin Forms, click Next, give your app a name, click Create. I'm just going to select the Master Details template, and for platforms, I'm going to select Android iOS and Windows UWP, click OK. If this is your first time using Android, you may need to install the emulator or the SDK. Just click accept and install. If this is also your first time creating a UWP app, you're going to have to enable development mode. So in Windows settings, this will pop up and you just click developer mode and accept. Now we should be able to run the default project. You should have your shared library project an Android project, an iOS project, and a Windows project. Currently the default startup project is set to the Windows project. So let's run the default project. So by default we have an app with a list of items. You can click into each item and see its text and description. All of this data is currently coming from a list hard-coded in the application. Now I will show you how we can get this from a pre-populated SQLite database. So all our work will be done in our shared project. The first thing we need to do is right click on the solution, click manage NuGet packages for the solution. We're going to browse NuGet packages and the package to use is the SQLite-net-pcl library and we will add that to our example mobile project. We don't need to add it to our Android iOS or UWP project click install. So here it's going to install all the required libraries and close that window. Expand the models folder. Currently we are getting items. So for simplicity I'm going to change the items ID from a string to an int. And then we're going to annotate that with primary key and auto increment. This way we have a default ID for our database table. And we also need to update all the references that were previously a string to an int for ID. So let's first go to our mock data store and get rid of the pre-populated data. So we can just get rid of that. And also in our mock data store, we can change our strings that are coming in for our IDs to ints. And then we must update our interface as well, iDataStore. Change these two strings to int. Next thing we want to do is go to our shared project. We want to add a new data folder to store our database or whatever you'd like to call it. Then we're going to add a class. This class will be used to set up and interact with our database. I'm going to call this one restaurant database. So now we have a new class to set up our database public class restaurant database. We need a connection to our SQLite database, so we're going to add a SQLite async connection called database and add the uh, using for SQLite. Now let's set up the path to the database. So we can use environment, special folder, and then we can use local application data and this will be available in Android, iOS, and UWP. And then we're going to use environment, get folder path from that location. And then we're going to combine that with our database name. So I'm going to call my database restaurant DB. So this is the spot that we're saving the database to. But since we want it pre-populated, we must get a database. We can do this by getting a database from an ebb resource in the project. So to access an ebb resource in our project, we must get the assembly info. We can use the introspection extensions, get type info, and the type of a class that is in our assembly. So I'll just use the app class and then get the assembly from it. We can load in our database into a stream. I'll just call that embedded database stream from the assembly. We use get manifest resource stream. The first part is our project name, so example mobile. Then we do dot, and then the second part is our database name, so restaurant db. 
So now we have our location that we're going to save to and the database that we're going to get the pre-populated data from. So let's first check if the database that we're creating exists. If it does not exist, then we create it. Otherwise, we skip creating that database. So first thing we want to do is create the file. So we do file.create at our database path. And then it returns the file stream. Then we want to make sure that we are at the beginning of our ebbed resource database. And then we simply copy our ebbed resource to our file stream. And then we close our stream when we are done. Now let's create a new connection to the database that we just created. And for this demo, we're going to use create table async. And then we're going to use our items object from our models. Add a reference to our models. And this will create a table for items if it does not exist in our SQLite database. Now that we have all our code to set up our database, let's create a method to get items from our database. So here we added a async method, get items async. It uses the database connection, it uses the item table, and it gets a list of all the items in the items table. Now that we have a database object defined, let's create an instance of it in our app.xaml.cs file. So let's go to app.saml.cs, prop full, tab tab. Let's add a restaurant database of type restaurant database. Let's get rid of the set value. If our restaurant database is null, then we create a new restaurant database. Let's make both of these static. Now we have our single instance of the restaurant database when restaurant database is accessed. So now let's go back to our mock data store. In the mock data store, there is a method get items async. We're going to remove the call to the in memory list of items. Now we're going to call app.rdatabase and then the get items async method. And we are going to await that. So for now, let's go back to our restaurant database. And to quickly create the database, let's get rid of our file for copying it from the ebb resource. So let's just comment that out for now. This will allow us to generate a database file using create table async for the items table. This is just for the purpose of the demo. You may generate the database some other way, or you may already have an existing database that you can just add to your solution. So let's run the project to create the database. It'll create it in our local application folder. So you can get your local application folder from the database path. Go to text visualizer and get the folder path. Then you can open file explorer and paste in your file location to find your database. So here we have restaurant DB created. So I'm just going to copy this database into our shared project. Stop the project from running. Right click on our shared project and paste the database in there. Now we have a database that we can copy from. So this database, let's make it an ebbed resource. In the properties window, select build action, select embedded resource, save the solution. But there is no data in this database currently, so let's download a program so we can look at the database and add data to it. Go to sqlitebrowser.org, scroll down, click on the latest release version, select the proper file for your system, download the application, then just install DB Browser for SQLite on your computer, click Next, Agree, Next, Click Next and install. It's finished. Now we can go back to Visual Studio, right click on our restaurant database, open the containing folder, open with, look for the SQLite browser on our computer. Here we have DB Browser for SQLite, open that up and click on the DB Browser for SQLite executable. And now our database is open in the SQLite browser. So we can click Browse Data. And here's the items table that we created by running our solution. So let's add some data to it. And let's click add a row. Go into the text editor over here. Type in a name, Pizza Hut. Go to the next column. Type in the description. Then we can add another row. Click into our text field. Burger King. Click into our description field, burger restaurant, click apply. And now we have two entries into our table. So we have a pre-populated database 
that we can copy as an ebbed resource to our local storage on any of our applications. So let's close this browser, make sure we save our changes. Let's go back to our local storage that we just created and delete our restaurant database that we created originally. Uncommon our code. So now we have our code back for copying our ebbed resource to our database path. So now let's save the solution. And now when we run the solution, we will find now we are loading data from our pre-populated database. So we have our Pizza Hut, Pizza Restaurant, Burger King, our Burger King restaurant. Just to show you that it works across the board, let's select the Android application. It says our startup project. So now we're running our application as an Android application. Let's run the Android emulator. If you do not have an emulator yet, you can just create one. The Android emulator is being downloaded and created. So now we have our Android emulator created. So click start. So here we have our Android emulator. So let's run the project. Let's close the emulator and turn on hardware acceleration. Go to Windows features, turn on Windows hypervisor platform. Click OK. You'll have to reboot your computer. So now here is our application running in the Android emulator. And here's our data, Pizza Hut and Burger King. And this data is coming from our pre-populated database. So let's stop the application. Put a breakpoint there. Run the application. And as you can see, our database is in our Android device path of data, user, com company name, example mobile app, files, local share, restaurant database. And that's all you need to do to deploy a pre-populated SQLite database on a Xamarin application. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and a comment below. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching.